Hey everybody, Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms here in Santa Maria, California. And how many of you ever heard the phrase, pride comes before a fall? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about today. Great topic, right? Pride comes before a fall. In Proverbs chapter 16, it's actually here, this is where that verse is found. In Proverbs 16 and verse 18, it says this, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. You know, and, and here's an, another version of the same, another, another verse in Proverbs. is Proverbs 18, verse 12. It says, before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. Before honor is humility. And so today I want to just talk to you about pride and what God thinks about pride and what is the definition of pride. And what do we do about pride? Because here, the Bible tells you, in, in a, it's not just a prophecy, it's a word of God that says that pride brings people to a fall. And I don't think anybody out there is saying, you know, yeah, I want to fall, I want to blow it, I want to mess up my life and the life of other people. <clears throat> Nobody's thinking that way. But the fact is, if there's pride functioning in our lives, we're setting ourselves up for destruction. We don't like that. Maybe you're going to click off right now. I encourage you to hang in here because I'm going to tell you at the end of this, how can you make sure you're keeping your life clear of pride? So let's pray. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us during this time. So Father, once again, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace that's sufficient for us, for your power that's perfected in our weakness. We thank you for your mercies that are new every day. We thank you that you're the God who's for us and not against us. You love us with a passionate love because you want us to win. And so we pray, help us today. Help us to learn. Help us to become wise as we learn from the word of God about this thing called pride. We pray that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I guess the first thing is we need to answer is what is pride? You know, sometimes, you know, maybe you have a thought about what is pride. You're thinking, well, you know, it's this guy I met the other day. He is such a proud person. I mean, just like how boisterous he is or how hot, you know, he thinks he's something. And, you know, we think of pride that way. But you know what? When it comes down to what the Bible calls pride, you may be surprised. Let me give you just some thoughts about what is the definition of pride. First off, at its bottom line essence, pride is living, living your life apart from complete dependence on God. In Psalms 10, in verse 4, it says this, In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. So pride is living your life apart from dependence on God. So it isn't necessarily some people that you would think are pride, you know, prideful or they come across prideful or their personality seems like too much or whatever. That doesn't mean, necessarily mean they have pride if their life is completely dependent upon God. In John chapter 15, Jesus said these words. He says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For, listen to this, for without me, another version says, for apart from me, you can do nothing. So that's pretty clear. We can't, so pride is when you begin to live life in your own strength, your own power, your own ability, by your own smarts. You think, you know, you're smarter than God, and that's another definition of pride. Uh, it's when we begin to live our life separated from God. Pride is actually the, the thing that caused Adam and Eve to be separated from God when they fell into sin. Here's what it says in Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. It says, The serpent, the devil, said to the woman, You surely will not die. For God knows that the day that you eat from the tree, because God told them, Don't eat of this tree, because the day you eat of it, you're going to die. So the devil tells him, For the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened. You won't die. You'll, and he says, And you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. 
when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate and she gave also to her husband with her and he ate. Now, if you really concentrate, and I've meditated on this verse many, many times, the essence was he, the devil was saying, you know what, Eve, you don't need God. You don't need to be dependent on God because she didn't know anything. She didn't know what sin was. She didn't know right and wrong. She just knew God told us to do this. Whatever God says, we're just doing that. And so what the temptation was is you can live your life, in other words, based on your own ability, your own righteousness, your own goodness, your own way to figure things out. It says she looked at that fruit of the tree. By the way, people say it was an apple. There's no indication it was an apple. I just called it the, the fruit of the tree uh, of, of the knowledge of good and evil, right? But the, this fruit had the ability to make you self-dependent or independent is another way to say it from God. And so she ate of the tree. She entered into pride. And guess what? It separated them from God and brought shame into their life because pride comes before a fall. Are you getting this? Now, here's another idea of what pride is. Pride makes you think that your way is better than God's way, right? So God, when he created us, he gave us an owner's manual. It's called the Bible. And in the Bible, you know, here it is. Whenever they make a car, you know, the, the car manufacturer, when, what they do is they put this little booklet in the glove compartment of the car. It's called the owner's manual. And it tells you things. It says, if you do this, if you do this, if you do this, don't do this, you know, and so on. It gives you instructions. And what they're thinking when they give you that is they want you to know how to get the most out of their car. They want you to buy another one. And so they say, we made the car. We know it doesn't run on diesel. It runs on gas or whatever the, it tells you in that. It tells you certain things to do so that you can have a long, happy relationship with the car, country, car company and be happy with the product that they made. So they made it and they know how it works. You, don't, you didn't make it. You don't know how it works. And so God made us. That's right, made us in his image and his likeness, and God knows how we work. And so he wrote a manual called the Bible that shows us how to live so we can get max life. Come on, somebody, how many of you want maximum life? Absolutely. And so, but here it is. Pride is where you think that you know how to, you know, you know more about the car than the manufacturer does, or you know more about your life than God does. Well, Proverbs 14, 12 says this, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Did you hear that? So pride is thinking that you know better than God, you know, that you, your way is better than God's way. Instead of just doing what God tells you, and you know what, as I have counseled people, uh, hundreds of people for over, you know, 50 years of following Jesus, as I've counseled people, what I find is when they get in trouble is when they don't do what the Word of God says. They do what they want to do or what their friend tells them to do or what, what the TV tells them to do or what the Internet tells them to do or what Facebook tells them to do. When they do that and it's contrary to what the Word tells, they always get themselves into trouble. That's right. Pride is also, here's another one, and that is pride is thinking that you're smarter than God. The Bible says this in Psalms 14, 1, it says, but the fool has said, into his, said in his heart, there is no God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That means the fool says, you know what, I'm smarter than God. 1 Corinthians 1, 25 says this, it says, but because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. So I don't think God has any foolishness, but if he did have foolishness, it would be smarter than you and me. And so pride is when you think you're smarter than God. Well, here's another thing I want to talk about, and that is, and those of you that are jumping in right now, I'm talking about pride comes before a fall. What is God's attitude toward the proud? Well, let me just give you a few scriptures where God talks directly about his attitude in the word of God toward pride. In Proverbs 16, verse 5, it says, everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Wow. 
<laughs> That's a huge statement, right? Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination of the Lord. Psalms 138, verse 6 says this, For though the Lord is exalted, yet he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. In other words, God is distanced from those that are full of pride. Here's another thing. Here's a, here's a huge one. Proverbs 6, 16, and 17. It says, there are six things which the Lord hates. How many of you would want to know, if the Lord hates something, I want to make sure I'm not participating in that activity, right? Proverbs 6, 6 16, and 17 says this. There are six things that the Lord hates, yes, seven, which are an abomination to him. The first one is haughty eyes or pride. So God hates pride. Well, that ought to be a clue, right? Here's another one that shows God's attitude toward pride. It's found in the New Testament in James chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible says just this in James 4, 6. It says, for God gives or he gives more grace or a greater grace. Therefore, it says God resists the proud. Another version says is opposed to the proud. God resists the proud but gives grace to those that are humble. And so God resists the proud. God, those that are, have pride are an abomination to God. Uh, 1 Peter 5.5, 5, it says, you younger men be likewise be subject or submitted to your elders, all of you. Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, for God is opposed to to the proud. So now we see what is God's attitude toward the proud? He thinks it's an abomination. Where those that are proud, full of pride, or abomination, He distances Himself from them. He hates pride. I'd say that that's pretty clear on God's position on pride. Well, what are some of the consequences of those who are proud? Well, let me just list a few things here in the Bible. Proverbs sixteen eighteen, which I already said, and that is pride goes before destruction. So we, if we understand the consequences of pride, we're going to make sure we want to avoid pride at all costs, right? Uh, in Proverbs 18.12, uh, uh, it says, before destruction in the heart of, uh, it says, before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. Uh, here's another one. Proverbs 29.23 says, a man's pride will bring him low, but a humble spirit will obtain honor. And so, Pride's going to bring you light, bring you down. It's not going to bring you up. It's going to bring you into destruction. Here's another one, Proverbs 11:2. When pride comes, then comes dishonor, but with the humble is wisdom. I like wisdom, don't you? And I like honor. But the Bible says with pride comes dishonor. And then in Proverbs 13:10, if you ever wonder what's the root of all pretty much all arguments, when people get into fights and arguments, what's the root in that? Well, Proverbs 13:10 says this, where there is strife, there is pride. Would I mean, you show me a fight and I'm going to show you pride. You show me arguments, I'm going to show you pride. That's what the Bible says. So these are the consequences of pride. Well, the last thing I want to uh, well, not last thing, but the next last thing I want to talk about is what is the destiny of the proud? In other words, what is the ultimate outcome of those who say, I'm just going to hang on to pride and I'm just going to do what I want. I'm going to I'm going to do it my way, uh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm just going to uh, I'm going to be I'm smarter than God. I'm I'm not going to do it based on God's word. I'm going to live life in my own idea of how I should live. Well, here's the destination. If you're on that bus of called pride, here's the destination. Proverbs 15, 25 says, The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the boundary of the widow. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. In Psalms 31, 23, it says this. It says, He harshly punishes the arrogant. Let me read the whole verse. Love the Lord, all you godly ones, for the Lord protects those who are loyal to him, but he harshly punishes the arrogant. In Isaiah 2.11, it says, The proud look of man will be abased, and the loftiness of man will be humbled. And then in Isaiah 2.12, it says, For the Lord of hosts will have a day of reckoning against everyone who is proud and lofty, against everyone who is lifted up, that he may be abased. So the ultimate outcome of pride 
is going to be a separation from God. It's going to be destruction. It's going to be uh, a, a day of reckoning that will you'll stand before God and judgment will be passed because you chose to trust in your pride and your arrogance and your haughtiness rather than to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. So here's the last thing I want to share, and that is, how do I get delivered from pride? Some of you are asking that right now. Like, okay, you got me, man. I don't want anything to do with pride. And I'm with you. I don't want anything. I don't want pride in my life either because I know the consequences of pride. Well, here's some things you can do. I'll just bullet point them to you. that You can keep yourself protected from pride. First off, spend time with God every day in prayer and in the Word of God. So I just get in the Word, spend time with God, you know, whatever it is, going to be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, whatever you is going to work for you. But if you spend time with God, because the Bible says, as we humble ourselves in the presence of God, he will exalt us. And then the word of God is going to work on any pride. It'll expose pride. And that's another thing. I would say, ask the Holy Spirit to show you when you're acting out of pride. Okay, and he'll help you with that. Now, he's not putting you down. He's not judging you. What he wants to do is he wants to bless you because God's will is for your good. God is for you. He's not against you. He wants the best for you. He wants you to be blessed. He wants your family to be blessed. He wants you to live a victorious Christian life, but he knows that if you have pride in your life, it's not going to go good for you, all right? Here's another one. Esteem others better than yourself. And we're think more highly of others. I love to do this. I love to just look at others. What can I learn from them? They're amazing. I just like to speak the best about other people. And, and it says, esteem others better than yourselves. Another one is humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That's found in James. It says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you uh, in due time. So we humble ourselves. Here's another one. Acknowledge that apart from Jesus, you can't do anything. So I do that every day. Lord, here I am. Uh, apart from you, I just want to remain in you. I want to abide in you. I want to be plugged into you. You're the vine. I'm the branches. You're the source of life. I'm not the source of life. I want to remain in you, and I want to acknowledge that apart from you, I can't do anything. And then here's another one. Give God the glory for every good thing in your life. Every time a good thing happens, even if, oh, you, maybe you did it yourself, I'm not saying you can't pat yourself on the back or somebody comes up and they give you a compliment, you can't receive it. Yeah, you can receive it, but ultimately you go to God and say, God, you know what? To you belongs all the glory. Any good thing in my life, your word says every good and perfect gift comes down from you, Father, and so I want to give you all the credit and all the glory. Here's another way to guard against pride, and that is be obedient when the Holy Spirit leads you. The Bible says Jesus humbled himself to the point of death, even the death on the cross. So when you walk in obedience, you're walking in humility. And then lastly, and some of you are going to have a hard time with this one, but I'm going to say it, submit to those in authority over you, even when you don't like what they're asking of you. Let me say that about again. Submit to those who are in authority over you. And I'm not saying if they ask you to do some sinful idea, some sinful practice or some sinful uh, task or something. I'm not talking about that. But submit to those in authority over you, even when you don't like what they're asking of you. When you do that, you're humbling yourself. Okay? Well, I want to pray for you in closing here that you will become aware and ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver me from all pride and arrogance. Let me pray for you right now. Father, I pray for everyone watching this video. Lord, your word says pride comes before a fall. And so, Lord, we don't want to fall. We want to always remain standing in you. We want to be able to walk in you. We want to walk in victory. We want to walk in the grace of God and the mercy of God and so on. But, God, we pray, deliver us from all pride, especially spiritual pride. Spiritual pride is for those of you that are thinking, I don't need this message. If you're thinking that, you need this message. So, Father, I pray, deliver us from pride of all sorts of kinds of, and all kinds of pride, all types of pride, all attitudes of pride. Deliver us from those things and fill us with humility. Lord, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand and we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. 
amen and amen. Hey, I just want to let you know that I have a YouTube channel, and I want you to go to my YouTube channel, which is Fred Crop K-R-O-P-P. -P. When you get there, click subscribe, click like, and click the bell, because I've got lots of videos there for you to get some great teaching that God has given to me over the years, and I'm giving it to you. Anyhow, in the meantime, I want you to know that Jesus loves you, the Father loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.